I think we're live. No? Maybe? <laughs> Can someone confirm? Can you hear us? <laughs> Waiting and eating pizza. Nice. We just had lasagna. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> nice. So this is our first live stream. We've uh, never done something like this before. So we thought we make it a bit chilled. So we got a, a bottle of wine. Cheers <laughs> to anyone. And let's see who's there. Sebastian, Julian, Richard. Oh, nice. A lot of people we know, a lot of patrons. Awesome. Really nice. So we are currently in uh, Guadalupe and anchored here outside of the marina. There's a lot going on right now, like people are going kiting and surfing right around our boat. So it's, it's, it's really crazy. And we wanted to talk about two major things today, like first a bit about the Atlantic crossing and then what happens next, because basically our two year plan ended and we can also talk a bit in German eventually, Günther. I think you can actually, uh, man kann, glaube ich, die Untertitel anschalten. Also, das yeah. sollte es direkt übersetzen. Anke in Italiano, da wirst du avere la possibilità di mettere i sottotitoli. And YouTube should do the live translation, basically. <laughs> nice. So, how many people do we got? Ah, oh, 20 people. Amazing. <laughs> Greta was already scared that no one is coming, so... I was super freaked. <laughs> thanks a lot for being in here. <laughs> Appreciate it. Really nice. But yeah, should we, should we start with the crossing? Um, yeah. Probably some of you have already seen uh, the YouTube videos that we have published in the last weeks by now. Uh, it got a lot more videos than we would have expected because so much happened actually and it was a really great experience for both of us. If you have any kind of questions regarding the Atlantic crossing, just feel free to put them in the comments and we will go through them. Um, in general, I would like to start with a very personal experience because when we actually left for the Atlantic crossing... <laughs> Greta wanted to take the plane. <laughs> I actually wanted to take the plane. So this is something we did not share by now. Uh, Michael kind of forced me to do the Atlantic crossing and uh, by now i'm kind of very happy that i've done it it has been a unique experience to all of you out there who are currently thinking if you should do it or not even if you're scared like me because i was super scared i was so much scared that i would have liked to take the plane in the end it was a great experience uh, if you plan it the right way if you go in the right uh, time frame which by now they're pretty established I think it's really nice to um, yeah to do it, and we it's something we will never forget. Yeah, and it is way better. Like also from from a, a waves wind perspective, it is way better than in the Mediterranean. Like you have way longer waves, you have way more stable winds, so it is way more comfortable. We had like three or four days with with rough conditions, but in, in the end. Uh, nothing compared to going against Meltemi or like the 40 knots of, of winds in, in the Mediterranean with the short waves. So Richard is asking if we were scared during the crossing. Um, maybe I should go first because <laughs> I'm the scary one here. Oh, or the scared one, not the scary one. <laughs> but we, we were super lucky. We did not have a lot of uh, bad weather. In general, we had very little wind so uh, most of the times we were pretty slowly on the way but we had three days which were actually at my birthday um which were the worst really where we had like 30 knots of wind we had four meter waves really short waves like michael was saying before um that compared to the mediterranean there is actually longer waves uh we unfortunately also a little bit experienced the opposite so we had really short waves in those here in this three day period yeah um, there was one moment I have to admit when I was actually steering. Uh, it was it was at my birthday, exact the same day. That was like the worst day on our whole crossing, and I I was getting I was really getting scared because the waves were really trying to push the boat around. Well, they're not trying to do anything, but they were pushing the boat around. And I just remember standing there. Michael was down there cooking, and luckily with me was out Hugo, 
And I just remember just looking at Hugo and he looked back and it was like, okay, I'm taking now over the steering wheel. Um, I think in those kind of situations, if you ever get scared, it's very important to just be honest. If you have other crew me members, uh, yeah. we had the luck to have them with us. If it's your first time, I would always recommend to bring crew members. Even if it's a tricky question, we know some people have a lot of thoughts about crews and it's not so easy to find the right ones. We totally agree yeah. on but that. In the end, you don't see each other that often because you have shifts. People are like exhausted. You're down there uh, enjoying or reading or doing something in, in the deck. It's like mostly for lunch and dinner or for breakfast that, that the people are out. So yeah. it's, it's really, really chill. It was a bit tricky because on a few days we had like waves coming from different directions. So we had like the swell coming from one and uh, the main way from another. So it was always like moving the boat left to right. So we had to do a lot of hand steering. But beside that, it is really like surfing just with a, a way, way bigger surfboard. Like it's really literally going with the wave down and, and up again. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, I think we went, for, at least for me, from the most scariest moment from these really big waves to the most happy one, because the same waves, if they are stable enough, they can make you surf so amazingly and i just remember the boat going down it literally starts shaking because i think we went up to 13 14 yeah. knots so which fortuna never has done before and probably will not do again so it was pretty shaking but it was just you could really feel the speed taking you over and that was it was one of the most craziest experiences it was amazing agatha asks how much experience should a sailor have before doing an atlantic crossing we had one and a half year in the Met, basically. Which, continuous sailing. Yeah, which was the best teacher. Like, if you start in the Met, you have crazy strong winds. And compared to here, the, the winds in the Met are always changing. She, she, she added as a crew member, maybe, Agatha. So the question is, to be able, able, you know, to react? Yeah. No, I think it's... No, no, we should still okay. be on. So, Do you think we were lucky with the crossing weather? Huh. I think we were lucky. We were early. Like you should yeah. start earlier than the winds are less. If we looked strong. at the yeah, and we look if we look at the weather reports after like end of December, January, there were a lot bigger and heavier winds. So if it's your first time, just go in November, even if it takes you longer and you might have some moments. You know where the wind is gone um who cares like it's an experience so much time to out the there. and uh you know it actually took like 23 days yeah. but we never got bored like i think that's also something people might be scared but let's be let's read what people are actually <laughs> uh in finland we take snap oh okay Snaps, yeah, nice. oh, there's a lot of drinking going yes. on i see that's very good <laughs> <laughs> we, we lived in finland for two years basically before we went to the boat we were in helsinki yeah. for two years and then we decided we have enough of winter and darkness and uh, let's buy a boat and <laughs> get into warmer weathers and now we are in 30 degrees got a loop in the caribbean and it's like amazing like it's yeah. really warm here the temperatures are crazy it's raining every now and then, but perfect weather. If we are rolling, oh uh, yeah. <laughs> we hope it does not make you seasick watching it. Um, we are, we have been rolling really hard actually the whole last yeah. week. The south side of Guadalupe, the south coast is pretty much exposed. So you always kind of the winds and swells which are getting in from the Atlantic, you're kind of exposed to them. We're a little bit hiding behind corals right now. This but, is amazing. Uh, we have never yeah. had that in the in the Met. Like here's a lot of coral reefs. Basically, you can anchor behind the coral reefs. Out there, it's 20, 25 knots and a lot of um, waves. But behind yeah. the coral reef, everything is flat. Like it's shaking a bit because the wind is not that strong right now. But in general, hiding behind coral reefs is like amazing. And it's an amazing spot to go diving. So. Yeah. <laughs> Corals have been really nice so far. Hopefully we'll never have any problems with them because they're not the easiest. How old we are. <gasps> you can never tell the age of a woman. I'm 32. One? You're 31. You 31. He will become 32 very soon. Yeah. And I just turned, well, just some time ago. <laughs> In November, I turned 28. So, yeah. This is... 
this is where we're at and uh, hopefully jo it's still on. <laughs> yeah. Giovanni from Italy and Giuseppe from Cyprus. We Cyprus, have been in nice. Cyprus too. Like last year, like our, our two year plan basically started uh, in Sardinia. We sailed from Sardinia to Sicily, to Greece, uh, did a lot of Greek islands, went to Turkey, sailed from Turkey to Cyprus, stayed in Cyprus, did a lot of work there, went to Israel for, for winter. We thought it's it's gonna be nice and warm there, which it wasn't, like it was a lot of rain. Yeah, it was a lot of rain. But it still it was awesome to, to visit. Uh, from a sailing perspective, we would not go back there because the, the coast is very open and you do mainly sport sailing. There's not a lot of uh, anchorages out there. But, yeah, you have to stay mainly in Marinas. Yeah. But the the culture, the food, the, the, the land is really amazing. So, And then we went back all the way. Cyprus, back to Crete, uh, coronavirus started. Is that, is that a place where we stopped coronavirus? <laughs> yeah, we were hiding <laughs> and then we, we got back to Italy, yeah. Sardinia, and all the way back to Gibraltar, Portugal, and Las Palmas, and now to the Caribbean. So that's where we are now. It seems like the subtitles are not working. We're very sorry for that. Per i sottotitoli, se ci dispiace se non funzionano in diretta, Michel, adesso prova. Um, no. Cannot switch it on. Se comunque avete una domanda, fatela in italiano e vi risponderemo. <laughs> e se mai mettiamo i sottotitoli più tardi. Ok, so back to English. Um, how did it feel to swim in the middle of the Atlantic? I loved it. It was when we left, I said, I'm not taking the plane, I'm not taking the flight, but I want to swim in the ocean. I don't care how we're going to do that. And uh, yeah, it, it really shows if you're dream for something really hard. And every time I was scared, I was just thinking that soon I will go swimming again. And it turned to reality, especially the third time. Like one thing is jumping behind with the rope, which is super fun. But when we had so less wind for a whole day, yeah. where, we literally, where we literally stopped and jumped into the water, it was this amazing mix of excitement and scariness, which was just incredible. So do that if you ever cross the Atlantic. <laughs> and, and the water out there is so magical. Like you look down and it is like a diamond shining from, from below. Yes, those colors. Yeah, I was really... We tried to film them, but yeah, no, it's no always chance. It's tricky. Yeah. How often do you go diving? Um, well, Currently, less and less. Yeah. Here in the Caribbean, we are more actually snorkeling because for us, like diving, we more intend free diving, which means like literally, you know, doing exercises and free diving. We're not really doing that here anymore, simply for the fact that it's never deep enough. Like right now, we are in two and a half meters of depth yeah. of water. So, um, but we do a lot of snorkeling. Uh, we try to do that at least every second day because it's also our only way to actually do sports. So if you live on a sailboat, it's uh, sometimes really hard to get any kind of movement. So going snorkeling for us is also the only way to kind of, yeah, get a little bit movement in. Huh? What occupation did you have before you became sailors, Jackie? Huh. The same we have now. <laughs> <laughs> More or less, yeah. Basically, I was working um, as a product manager in a company um, for seven years, more or less. And then we decided to leave for Finland, where, where I did my sailing license. And Greta did the studies. And then I was involved in a lot of IoT startups there for software uh, and, and sales and business development mainly. And I found another company which I managed to take with me um, on board. So I'm... Um, working for um, a company in Italy, developing uh, software, but I'm working for, for business and sales. And I'm also a bit trading on the side. So learning to, to trade and uh, to get into that. Yeah, me, um, I, I worked as industrial engineer before. I also, that's also what I studied in Finland. I then went more into the marketing. I worked for like almost a year in Finland as a uh, it was actually called Growth Hacker. I don't know if that's yeah. still a word. Uh, where you actually try to make the company grow. 
And so that's a lot of marketing, a lot of digital marketing. That's why I also started One Sailing, which is kind of my passion project. And uh, we have been having so much fun. And it's so amazing to have the ability to meet you all. Uh, I would have never imagined that social medias are still so social. So that was, yeah. that's still the best part of this whole One Sailing uh, thing. Getting we to get so and... much help from you guys and yes. from Instagram, YouTube, like on the comments, if there is some problem. Whatever happened, there was always someone there to help us out and to give us tips on, on the anchor, on the windlass, on the motor, on the batteries, whatever failed it. It is so amazing. So we only hope we're giving a little bit back yes. what you have been giving us because you have thanks. been great. Really. Thanks a lot for all your help. Like yeah. literally the sailor community is so amazing. And yeah, so what I'm doing right now is a mixture. I'm working as an industrial engineer for a company from remote. Uh, I'm doing research in industrial engineering for my old university and I'm doing digital marketing. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of mixing this up, which I really love. Um, and yeah. COVID made it all better for like remote work. Literally, that was like- It's probably the only, yeah, only, the only good positive thing. thing about COVID is that people yeah. accept remote workers more easily. So this is obviously a great plus for us or so for everybody else who wants to go, go for this life or another dream, just do it. Yeah. Like now you can work from, from anywhere. It's, it's so amazing. Oh, it's going fast. Thank yeah. you for answering. Greetings from Poland. We will soon have a Polish flag. True. Yeah, we, we are changing flags and the new one will be Polish. USA, hello. Cyprus, yeah, we, we want to go back. Hope to see you again. Cyprus is really yeah, nice. Yeah, there is such a nice pizza restaurant in Cyprus. They had like all the Italian ingredients. Okay, wait, wait. Yeah. So, do you prefer traveling on boat or doing it the traditional way? Seems like you don't really get to see much of the country. Right? Um, this is true in a sense because it's our fault. <laughs> so, we love sailing, we love swimming, we love the sea. That's why most of the time you see us on the sea. Uh, we have been trying to force ourselves to m see more of the country. That's what you will also be seeing in the next YouTube videos. So Martinique, we went a lot into the land. Yeah. Also here in Guadalupe, we are still planning to do a lot more. We have had a lot of boat works recently, so there's a lot coming in. That's why we have been mainly being on the boat. We love traveling, but maybe sometimes we mainly do living in the sense that we actually live on this boat so we doing traveling 24 7 is really exhausting so sometimes you also just for a week actually live there stay in a place yeah. enjoy the anchorage do some work go go for some swimming and yeah then then go for land exploration separately greeting from romania hello hello, hello Farah. nice <laughs> it sounds cool what did you eat and how did you prepare food well uh i guess for the atlantic still we got super lucky with ca ca catching fish. That was right. We got super lucky with catching fish. So we yeah. ate a lot of fish and we prepared a lot of fish. And Michael, he never gets seasick. So, and he loves cooking. I cooked everything like from so, lasagna uh, to soccer cake. Like we had like two birthdays, two birthdays, <laughs> the most amazing meals. I did like half the day I was down there cooking and preparing stuff. We had everything in there. Uh, Julian, our our patron, helped us to stock up still in in Portugal, so we yeah. still got some good uh, European. Julian, we actually still have some of your food on board. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we still have not finished at all. We really stocked up back then. Amazing, like yeah. and and due to the lot of fish we caught, we were able to open very little or very few cans. So yeah. we still have a lot of cans, canned food, and and stuff on board. Funny question: If you are ticklish. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> when will you cross into the Pacific? Oh, yeah, that's a good okay. question. I think it goes with the next one. We already know where you're sailing next. So maybe let's move on from the Atlantic yeah. and move on into... So initially we thought we do this uh, plan for two years. We bought the boat basically um, with a friend of ours. So we, we split the, the investment cost of the boat because we, we did not know how long it will last and we said let's do the met and then go from the met to the caribbean and we are here now and the last month we still had kind of digest the fact that we actually managed to live on board for two years and now still have the economic possibilities to even go on so when we when we started all this we literally just jumped into there and we said okay let's try it 
two years later, we are still here and said, okay, let's try it. <laughs> and uh, it has been great. Um, we have currently, well, we have one goal, one short-term goal, one long-term goal, and two possibilities. Short-term goal, something very exciting is coming yes. up. We will tell you more eventually later on. Um, we are sailing to Curaçao in August. So that's going to be our hurricane safe uh, yeah. spot. And something else is happening there. You will most likely see. <laughs> and uh, yeah, from there on, it's basically open. So we could do Pacific and go to Galapagos. Like Michael Galapagos. would uh, love to go I to Galapagos. I would love to go to Galapagos. Um, I don't know yet. I was scared of the Atlantic. So imagine now having to do the Pacific. Let's see. But they say the Pacific is more calm than the Atlantic. Yeah. So it should be better. And the other option is to go back up basically do uh, Cuba. Yeah, so anyhow, next year probably we'll do again the Caribbean. Yeah. Like this year, because of COVID and general situation, we were not able to see so much. By now we saw Martinique, we saw um, Guadeloupe. We still want to do uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Yeah, so that's the next says. place where we're going. And then we're going down to Curaçao. So this is kind of what's still happening until august which is kind of this first uh, season here yeah. in the caribbean and we're still stuck in in guadalupe because we're waiting for batteries <laughs> we are getting batteries like lithium batteries and a water maker so very big project really coming up. important before we go to the other islands like so far we've been on european islands and they are like more marina style so you find water and everything and then the more south we go, the less water, the less marinas we will find. So we will need a water maker, which is yeah. super expensive. And also lithium batteries, which are super expensive. But we have yeah. to do it in order to, to continue. Also with working, currently we see like working so much on our laptops, yeah. our batteries are just not strong enough anymore. But anyhow, like and also because we want to do another season here in the Caribbean, which means more isolated places, which means less marina style. And after that, we have to, like, I would love to go to Cuba, um, even if it's not such a sailing place uh, and it might be tricky, but I would love to see that. And then we kind of have to decide if we go Panama and Atlantic and then do Australia and New Zealand, or we are heading north. So uh, one of our other dreams would be to actually sail into New York, <laughs> which still sounds so crazy. Um, so that could be one possibility to yeah do the Bahamas, Florida, sail up America, New York, and then maybe cross back to the Mediterranean. Yeah, we have a, a, a very big goal for like the next two years, which we still try to well, formulate. It's, it's more a dream. It's a dream than a goal. Once we manage to try to set it down, um, but if we do that, we will have to start in the mat again. Yeah, we will have to get back to in the mat and <laughs> and then restart. But let's see. Uh, yeah, this let's is. See. This is kind of the general idea for what. So next year, for sure, Caribbean. So if you have any tips or if you would like to see something like we, we know we are very lucky to be moving right now. So if there is anything always that you want to see, just ping us or write us and we will try to show it to you at least. Or if you want to come to visit us, like hopefully the restrictions get less. Yeah. We will put up some uh, trips again uh, this year or next year for sure or become a patron of ours. So. Yeah, there's like Lauren. She yeah, has nice. a nice hi from Berlin. Awesome. Yo, also sailed with too. us. She, they actually sailed with us through the Gibraltar. Yes. Still one of the roughest rides, guys. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that. Sebastian asked if we miss Finland and if so, what do you miss most? You, obviously, guys. <laughs> no, our friends, like a lot, our friends in, in Finland are the most amazing things. The weather, we don't miss at no. all culture no, food, well, everything is really nice. Like, nice. The, the quality of living in Finland is amazing. We really loved it, but the winters are too dark and full of terror. <laughs> oh, 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 I missed up. Okay, um, solar panels. Okay, so are solar panels enough? Or should, why are, do you, you have a small generate, diesel generator on board? We don't have a generator. Um, we have like 600 watts of solar. And we hope that with the new batteries, it will be enough. If not, 
for the Caribbean, we will also get uh, or thinking of getting a wind, a wind generator. generator. The, the diesel generator for us is very simply not sustainable enough. Yeah. Così Giovanni velocemente sui pannelli solari e sul generatore, per noi la scelta del generatore non è una scelta ecosostenibile, perciò non speriamo dobbiamo mai fare questo passo. Staremo con i pannelli solari e forse un giorno compreremo l'eolio, se avremo i soldi. <laughs> and the thing is like in the met we would never go for the, the wind generator because the, the wind is not that strong and not that stable and here the wind is always like 15 to 20 knots and always really stable like yeah. here in the caribbean uh, wind generator would be still amazing emma is also here hey emma oh, nice. oh, thanks so much for the donation Good luck, thank world. you for the sticker hello denmark where to next hurricane season hurricane yeah season curacao and Curacao. something else is happening there. And I got married in Curacao. Costi, oh, nice. Costi, we have, have to, to contact you. Talk. We have a lot of yes. questions for you. <laughs> You'll have a blast there. A lot of good punch. Ciao, Gabriele. Oh, bellissimo. Nice. Oh, this is actually a guy who, like, when I was 16, I did one year in Ireland, and he. We were like a group of students who had the possibility to go there and he was one of them and so amazing that you're here thanks so much for not watching <laughs> the tv but being here with us thanks so much way baby no no i'm very sorry no we're not planning a baby <laughs> there are a lot of other sailing channels who are doing babies right now so not if you love that plant. but no we <laughs> we it's actually the the, the thing in curacao is not concerning 100% us, but friends who are coming. So it's going to be their will or not to share it. And I already have to take care enough for Greta, so I don't need another. <laughs> Says the one who hurt his knees by getting out. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, okay. Yacht if we master. did the Yachtmasters. I, I did not the Yachtmaster. I did the RYA inshore skipper and offshore skipper. And with that, I got an ICC license. <laughs> And that's like the most important thing. Like you have to, or in most of the cases, you need an ICC license for the insurance. And it's also the only thing recognized worldwide. I would love to do a yacht master. Now we have enough miles with the ocean crossing. So that would be the next step if we get back, for example, yeah. to uh, the Mediterranean. I would love to do it in the UK. I don't have anything, so. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe one day I should maybe do that. Julian is right. We are following the tuna. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, since we are here, we did not catch a lot of fish. No. Um, there is a lot more fish. Like, But we saw whales yesterday. We saw whales. We did not manage to film them. I felt so bad. But we like we saw them from far away. So I hope we managed to see them again. That's why. Crazy. Was... Jumping out and... <laughs> Now, whales were, were really amazing. There's a lot of turtles here and uh, a lot of amazing fish, like way more than we ever saw in the Met. Crazy. Like small Caribbean yeah. fishes. Oh, we did um, not see big fish so far for for spear fishing, for example. And during our small crossings we did here between the islands, we did not catch, we were not lucky no. enough to catch some. But who knows? Yeah, we're definitely going to follow them around. Je Jackie Chan, I hope I'm reading that right. Oh, uh, thank you so much. Nothing better than making other people laugh and smile. What was the most difficult thing in the ocean crossing? Leaving. Leaving Las <laughs> Palmas. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was leaving with COVID, like, was yeah. the most tricky thing, because we had uh, this, this positive case, which was not really positive, but... It, Anyhow, it, it we had a lot us. of different yeah. bureaucratic things. Um, besides that, I think in general, if you do it during COVID or not, the preparation, the excitement, the actual leaving is a lot harder than the sale itself, I would allow yeah. to say. So, because once you're out there, it sounds fatalistic, but it is like it is, you know, you have to go with the flow. Yeah, and way trickier so, than the Atlantic crossing is the part from Portugal or Spain to Las Palmas, yeah. like the wind is way stronger, the waves are way stronger, not so regular sometimes and can change quickly. And like also the a lot of people we talked about all say that the first part 
from Gibraltar down to Las Palmas is way more tricky and way rougher than the Atlantic crossing itself. And I would say the most difficult thing is the psychological aspect. Yeah. Like being in peace with yourself for 23 days without the things that you're used to, like Facebook, Instagram, emails, whatever. Yeah, or just, you know, being able to order food. Just <laughs> fell. Yeah, yeah, like it's really being out there. It's amazingly beautiful, but you, you really have to cope more on a personal and psychological aspect than, than uh, from a sailing perspective, I would say. Is it easy to find good internet connection in Caribbean? Well, you tell us how is the internet connection right now. <laughs> um, so far, it is easy because we have been we, in Martinique. Yeah. So we are still in France. So we are actually still living off our roaming, our Italian roaming, which obviously does not work for people outside of Europe. Uh, but for now, we have been living with that. Otherwise, there is Digicel, which seems pretty good for the whole Caribbean. And I think currently it's like if you want to have 100 gigabytes for a month, it's 65 euros. Otherwise, there's like 30 gigabytes for 40 euros and stuff yeah. like that. So the possibilities are there. Otherwise, you can always try, you know, find some hotel where you can <laughs> throw anchor in front and hope that their internet works. But and we signed up for, for Elon Musk's uh, SpaceX internet. So let's hope that we will get that satellite that internet awesome. in the yeah. next half year or so that would be really amazing did we learn hebrew no, no we also did not learn uh, finnish when we were in finland no. but we we managed a little bit of spanish and we're trying to manage a little bit of french french is actually a language i would love to learn but yeah it's it's trickier oh thanks sebastian for the sticker ciao ragazzi come siete organizzati per internet a bordo uh Sì, Gabriele, velocemente, l'abbiamo detto anche prima in inglese. Well, maybe we could uh, cover the Atlantic part of internet. Uh, on the Atlantic crossing, we have had our Iridium Go satellite internet. It's like 150 euros for unlimited data, but the data is really, really slow. So you cannot get anything than text emails and SMS messages you can call which works really well so we had a lot of fun uh, it is uh, unlimited calls with this 150 euros um, or 150 minutes of, of calls and really nice works most of the time um, but yeah it's not real internet again it's just for the weather forecasts and yeah. for the emails it helped us a lot in the end to communicate with the marinas to change because initially we wanted to go to Saint Lucia um, but then they said they want to have another test and quarantine and stuff. And then we said, no, let's go to St. Lucia, uh, to, to Martinique, because there we could enter um, because we had a negative test when leaving and we were out more than 14 days at sea. So there is no mm -hmm. infection, um, risk, basically. Forse velocemente in italiano. Internet qui al Caraibi, siamo ancora in Francia, perciò stiamo usando il roaming nell'Italia. Mentre sull'Atlantico abbiamo usato... Iridium Go? Iridium Go. Oh, there are people windsurfing behind you. Yeah, they're literally doing everything. This is a very, very busy anchorage. So we have, how is this new foiling thing called? Yeah, it's like the on, windsurf. A, on a foil board and then they hold it in, in their hold hands. Hold their like, wing in their hands. It's amazing. And there's like a lot of small boats around here grilling and uh, partying and like it's... Yeah. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. It's like full of party everywhere. <laughs> yeah, Kosti, I will call you about <sighs> Curaçao. Definitely. <laughs> What's the best rum? Oh. We still don't have rum on board. Every time we, when we want to cook or make tiramisu or something, we would need rum. We, is, now we have rum we, with maracuya. We, we, we do like, I don't like the ba like the normal rum. I like the it plain. with like the plain. So I like it with maracuya or stuff like that. So whenever we went to see a rum plantation, uh, well, a yeah. rum factory <laughs> we never found someone that we both like so uh we hope when you come and visit us sebastian that we will find it together and the rum here is different like in europe we are more used to those flavored sweet rums and here it's like plain rum so it's a lot stronger and a lot more spicy it's more like grappa almost. yeah it's more like grappa or schnapps yeah okay yeah so christian is um 
suggesting to instead of getting solar panels and or wind generators to get a hydro generator is it called like the one you put on the ah yes on the on the prop on so the basically prop? when we're sailing it generates electricity yeah. So cur is... currently we're not moving that much, but otherwise yeah. it probably would be a good idea. Like in the map, it would have been a great idea yeah. because we moved every day, but currently we are very stable. And so it's probably right now or not. Yeah, we still have to wait like for two or three weeks for the batteries to arrive. If we manage to find a shipper and forwarder because it's not so easy here with customs. And the same goes for the water maker. And then we are planning to move more. Yeah. How happy are we with Fortuna as a yacht in crossing the oceans? She has been an amazing girl. She has, like when we bought Fortuna. She's a girl. Oh well, yeah, Fortuna. Fortuna is a girl. <laughs> she, she has really been great. And uh, when we bought her, we kind of knew what we wanted, but we got so much more. We yeah. would buy this boat ever and ever and ever again in this size so obviously yeah. if you talk bigger or smaller boats uh it's different but for like 39 feet this is really we have we have seen a lot of other boats yes. here and we would never change we have seen a lot of other boats and also newer boats and the thing here is that with our boat is like from 2003 and back then they still built the boats differently like not with this fancy new multi-layer mm. technology and like way more thicker uh, hull, for example, or the mast is also like twice the, the, the size than, than the new masts. And it is still not like if there is waves or something hitting the boat, inside we can sleep without hearing the wood crack or stuff like that. We chartered, before we bought Fortuna, we chartered uh, Dufour, a new one. And there it, it was like working the whole night. You could not sleep with very little waves hitting and I think Fortuna is for us especially so great because it is already nice and livable inside, but it's still an amazing sailing yacht. So yeah. we can sail nicely with her. We sail very stable. Me, the scary, scared person saying that uh, I have learned a lot to trust our sailboat. We have been in quite some rough conditions also now coming from Martinique to Guadalupe. I was literally there on the winch holding myself and crying. Uh, but the boat did well. <laughs> I we we had like 40 knots at 4 a.m. in the morning with rain, thunder, yeah. like three meter waves because in between the island there is always a channel and it pushes the waves and the wind and everything through it. We did not know that before. So we were just heading out there and like after half an hour we could not return because it would have destroyed us. But uh, everything's well what I'm yeah, yeah. well. <laughs> uh, We were like the whole cockpit was washed down every few minutes like I was yeah. wet from top to bottom for like four to five hours uh, hello from Novara hello back UK yacht master let's see yes what was the most interesting animal fish or environmental thing you saw for me it was uh, scaramuza how is it called like there's this um, oh, the... seaweed mm. and when we were in the Atlantic or during the Atlantic crossing we saw this really huge patch of seaweed like it was gold brownish like a lot I think of... you can actually see it once in the in yeah. the last youtube uh episode it's of that land crazy so much like kilometers kilometers long of seaweed like thick seaweed on the top of the of the water and it shines which, like golden which unfortunately is actually environmentally seen not a good thing no. but it, it's one of the causes of climate change but it looks unfortunately really awesome when you sail yeah. through it um what is it for me well the, the amazing fear here in the caribbean every time we go swimming i see a new fish or a bird it or always bird. sees birds yes oh, well i don't know why but i even saw a manta jumping while well, the manta jumping saw, was this I, a manta I saw a manta jumping jumping out behind our boat like that was definitely the most the best one crazy. so far and i still hope to swim with them so yeah. that's the next one Italian roaming, yeah, it's actually yes. really good. <laughs> so before leaving you, take an Italian SIM card with you. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, hello, thanks. Thanks, Cedric. <laughs> so nice. Both are always girls, oh, you see? Oh, I did not know. 
<laughs> they both have an international boating license and how long did you take to get it? No. it I, I It's only me that has the license. I have, like I said, the RYA uh, offshore skipper and it took me like one and a half year. Basically it's two units of theoretical courses and three weeks of practical sailing in, in I did it in Finland and that is it. I did additional courses for short range uh, VHF communication certificate and for celestial navigation because I was interested in it. But other than that, we did the license. We chartered the first boat for one week in Italy and we then bought the boat. Like yeah. we had no prior yeah. experience. I was not sailing for years or something. I was once on a sailboat, did the license, did one week of charter uh, as, a, as a skipper and bought the boat. So that's it. Well, good cooking, Marina. Thanks for being here. <laughs> <laughs> what keeps you going? Is it rather the calm, nice sailing experience or the extreme conditions when you're literally afterwards happy to have survived? <laughs> oh, wow. What keeps us going? Oh. Uh, I go for the smooth sailing. I definitely not go for the other Yeah, one. like the best moments now since the Atlantic crossing, we have this, the generator, the asymmetrical spinnaker. And I think smooth sailing with the asymmetrical spinnaker is one of the most amazing things. Like you have this big yeah. sail out there and the, the boat is just gliding uh, down the waves and amazing. We're yeah, not, for me, the junkies. sailing without the Jenerco. I'm still scared every time we put up the Jenerco. It's just such a huge sail, and we have heard so many horror stories about ripping it, and it's just so beautiful, and I don't want to rip it. <laughs> you didn't counter a lot of fresh. Well, not during the crossing. No. Luckily, no. Well, uh, but actually, unfortunately, we, we watched Sea Spiracy last week. Uh, you should definitely watch that if you did not see it. And it seems that most of the trash is actually fishing gear. Yeah. And we definitely, unfortunately, have to support that. When we were sailing here in the Caribbean, there is so much fishing gear, like yeah. Nets, broken fishing gear laying around. Ropes and stuff. Like also yesterday yeah. when we came here to this place, our prop got stuck in, in some nets and I had to dive down with like 25 knots and the boat was crashing and yeah, no. not very nice. Do you plan to install lithium on board? Yes, that we would do, be yeah. like so far we only have two batteries and it's like 200 amps and we would need like at least six or 700 and the next project is lithium. We already found a nice partner, so might. We hope in the next month to get this done. Yeah. Um, like what is a little bit different now for us in the Caribbean is the whole transportation thing. And here we're pretty, you know, uh, yeah, used to well. Here is everything, especially bigger things like lithium batteries, which are also dangerous. Like shipping those around, it's not as easy and uh, cheap or fun. So yeah, they're trying to currently figure out the transportation. And once that is done, we hopefully have soon a lot of power on board. The good thing is that they don't need to go through the Suez Canal. So true. <laughs> Now we need to we we need to ship them uh, with sea freight from uh, from land, so it takes quite some time to get here. But do we prefer Aperol or Campari? White wine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't actually like spritz for the aperitivo. What is your favorite aperitivo? Gin and tonic. Francia Corta. Yes, Francia Corta. That we ever that that's like the things we miss from home. <laughs> and also very difficult on a boat like the, the 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 thing i struggle the most with is like storing good wine like on the boat it's always shaking the temperature is not stable you cannot store good wine on the boat yeah unless you have a freezer for the wine or a fridge which we don't have yet <laughs> <laughs> this is like all in the dream package up there but yeah <laughs> um happy with the inner force day setup oh yes, yes. The inner force day was really worth it. Like it's, we can remove it, uh, we can take it out, we can use it for the heavy wind jib or for the storm jib. Um, together with the furler, it works really nice. So we have this Svegen furler on uh, on the bottom, 
and Rolly Tasker put like a very strong rope. It's an anti torsion anti -torsion rope, rope in the heavy yeah. And we can like just take it away and then the whole um, area is free again. We can put the dinghy or, or anything else there. And it is really nice, I would say. And also here, we need it way more because like there, the, the wind here is always stronger. Like it's always 15, 20, 25 knots. And the Genoa, like flying the Genoa with those winds is, yeah, just not. Yeah, because we, we also have a bigger Genoa. So we have yeah. like 130% Genoa, which we love. We loved in the mat. It always kept us going. But here sometimes it's a little bit too big. Also, if you start reefing it, it's, if you have to reef a sail, it's never really the same as if you, you know, yeah. can pull out the whole sail. And it's a heavy wind chip. It's amazing. Yeah, so we have been really liking that one. Uh, do, you, do you rely solely on an electronic map or do you also use paper charts? Yes, we have paper charts on board, but we mostly use electronic. Well, we had for the Atlantic crossing. Yes, and for St. Lucia and for a few islands we have paper charts, but I know how to use them. And with the offshore skipper, we did everything in order to plan like a crossing from inshore to uh, basically coastal waters and offshore. And we would, I would love to like in Finland, I used mostly paper charts because there's so many rocks and so many marks and so many um, signals and marks everywhere and you really need them. Um, but here it's, or also in the Met, it's like you go out and then there's nothing, there's just water, so. Well, here it's a lot of corals. There's a lot of corals, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, normally we rely on electrical navigation. Ooh, is it possible to have a pet on board, like a dog or a cat? Yes, if you have the patience for it, it is possible. We, uh, we see a lot of other boats yes. who do that. Um, we would never... Yeah, like for the dog. Did, did you read the next one? It's like, or a parrot. A parrot, yes. Parrot, yes, <laughs> definitely. Definitely a parrot. <laughs> now, the thing for the, the dog is that you have to walk it every day. So you have to go on land and walk it, and that's not possible every day. And we are of the opinion, or I am of the opinion, I don't want to put words in your mouth, that about it is possible to have animals on board. The animal the needs to like it. Yeah, the animal needs to like it. And why do we really have, like, it's always the question why. Uh, so it's, it's not their natural habitat. Uh, a lot of people do it. A lot of people it works well. But yeah. for me, it's always a question why. So the parrot would obviously be amazing because it finds land. But <laughs> now in general, it's always tricky. If, if you have the passion for animals and you have the time and patience to go for it, it works probably as well in our apartment than it does here. So Sebastian asks, what is the boat upgrade you are most happy with? It's a good question. Ironically, even if I hate it at the same time, because I always have to do the wash, the dishwashing, it's the salt water pump for dishwashing because it does allow us to decrease our fresh water consumption so much so yeah. we can go a lot longer that, that's and this is freedom for us so right now without water maker we manage to stay out uh, for like three weeks we can shower we can do everything we have water to drink we don't need to bring plastic bottles forward and backward and with the salt water pump for the dishwashing we manage to like double the uh, the time basically what has been your scariest experience on the boat before Oh, that's a good one. Once once upon a time <laughs> in the Met, we were like very lazy because no. we, we were we lazy. We just forgot. We, we forgot, to check, we forgot the to check the weather. And we were in uh, Butterfly Valley in Turkey, which is a really nice anchorage. Like it's a very V-shaped um, place. And also very the... Very narrow. <laughs> And also the, the the depth goes down from like five meters to sixty meters very quickly. It's a very steep anchorage. Yeah. And we were there, and all the boat left in the in the evening, which is not normally not a good sign. So you have to know in Turkey when when it's August and it's September, October, it's it's always nice weather, always. 
And then there starts winter slowly crawling. Yeah. And what we learned in that situation that winter in Turkey works like that. You have super nice weather for five days and you have really shitty weather for two days. So rain, wind, whatever yeah. else you want to put in there together, you know, in, it's just crazy. We were like in the morning waking up with like the boat was like healing. We had no sails up, nothing. We were just at anchor and uh, like the, the waters on the, uh, the, the windows on the side were on the water. So we went out, checked the instruments and it was like 40, 42 knots of, of wind. And the dinghy was lift up and was flying around uh, freely. Like it broke uh, a fishing rod actually. Um, we were dragging outside and as the valley was so steep, um, we had not much room to maneuver. Um, and we had to get the anchor back up. And I went forward, it was raining 40, 45 knots, wind, waves, everything against us, rain, and try to get the anchor up. And the anchor windlass was not working. Like we couldn't get the anchor up. Like we had like more than 60 meters like we had nearly we had every single chain, chain. Out. like we have 90 meters and 60 or 65 and, were down there and, and by like really then heavy. the problem was that we had dragged into the 60 meter depth of yeah. sea so the whole chain and the whole anchor were literally hanging with their whole weight in the sea yes and the anchor winds stopped working so what we had to do is actually pull it up manually because we don't even have a manual winch so our winch in the front only works electrical so um, what we did is Michael took uh, a, rope. a rope and he attached it to the farthest point of chain that he could reach. Like 30, so like one, my arm went down, yeah. attached it. Greta winched we, it we up for half a meter. Yeah. I detached it, down, attached it, winched it up with the rope, down and so on. And it took us like two, two and a half hours. It took us two and a half hours. While and we were pushed out with 45 knots, Greta was maneuvering in and pushed out again in and pushed out again well we were not only pushed out the problem was we were pushed against the walls of yeah. the of this uh, of v-shaped valley. valley so and i still remember only i was walking from the steering wheel to the winch from steering to the winch and we had like this really strong rain shower so it was yeah. raining really hard and the whole teak because in here we have teak the whole teak was wet and i would go back steer and the next moment i would go to the winch there was so much wind that the teak was dry again. So I just remember wet teak, dry teak, wet teak, dry yeah, teak. That was so crazy. And that, but what we learned then that even our scariest moment, which still was part of that, yeah. we functions. And that, yeah. that's really important, whatever you're doing about, when it starts to get scary, it's not time to be scared. We were like super calm. You like, have to Even calm Greta was then. super calm, like it was amazing. Well, it's kind of, it's this moment where you know, okay, you're, you're head deep in this situation. So you got to work now. It's that you cannot, you know, just walk off the boat and go home. So that's kind of when you have to react and function. And uh, yeah. Brandon says we can't walk a parrot, but I can send it out to search water. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope like the, the, the scary thing about the parrot is just that flies away and never comes back so no it ships everywhere but anyhow <laughs> <laughs> well it's true <laughs> grazie giovanni thanks so much for your compliment getter you're just Amazing. crazy we love you uh what are your options with internet on the sea uh, as we said before we still have the italian roaming and on the atlantic we use iridium go satellite internet yeah. the interesting thing is that we have most likely, like here in the Caribbean at least, we've seen that we have better internet on the anchorages than we have on land. Because like you have to yeah. see that all the masts, the, the communication uh, masts are up on the mountains and they shine down into the anchorages. But on the land, in between the houses and the buildings, the coverage here is really bad. So most like most of the time when we go on land, we don't have any reception or like very poor signal. And here on the, on the anchorages, we always have very good signal, like crazy. Una domanda nei Caraibi è successo che sia caduto furto in barca mentre si scende a terra. So Giovanni is asking if we have a head. How it's called? Um, um, thieves. If someone yeah, was thefts. stolen from yeah. our boat, like 
there is a, a group on Facebook, for example, which is like monitoring those. And we, we haven't always been very lucky until now. Yeah. Nothing really happened. And most of the cruises we have talked to, nothing happened. Um, Recently, there were a few like dinghies stolen in yeah. Martinique and in, in, in the area where we are at. But, <laughs> but our dinghy. But the dinghy motor has to be over, like, they only take dinghy motors which are over 15 PS. Horsepower. Horsepower. And our dinghy is actually not working anymore. We have a hole in it and we cannot fix it. And our dinghy motor is like five horsepower. So nobody really cares about and it. And nobody wants to steal our and dinghy. Nobody wants to steal it. So uh, it looks pretty safe right now. Um, obviously, it's like in a big city. You have streets where you should not walk in or where the risk is higher. But in general, I don't think you should be scared. Alex, greetings from South Tyrol. Hello. I'm not sure, but home. did I go to school with you? Might be. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this is a nice one. I, I read that. Since you are together on the boat all the time, how often do you fight and whose fault is it? Usually. <laughs> nah, nah, we rarely uh, fight. Yeah. Like we also, like we were scared in the beginning that we live so closely together. But at the end, we don't like we see each other all day but we work i go fishing or uh, diving swimming whatever there are actually days where we sit close to each other on the table yeah. but we are both so immersed into our work on the laptop that we at the end we're like oh how was your day like as if we would have not she's cutting videos and then she's in the zone like she's yeah, just I'm like really good in the zone when i am <laughs> there is he can like talk to me and i don't care <laughs> Uh, oh, bonjour. Pourquoi ne parlez-vous pas français? Okay, well, we do not speak French because we cannot speak French. I, I can speak a little bit French. I read a little bit of French. But it seems you have the same amazing boat as ours. So congratulations. Um, it's a great boat. It's amazing. If, if you want to tell us what years yours is, it's always really funny because the boat has evolved so much. So yeah. really nice. I hope you like it as much as we do. What's the coldest region you have sailed to? Finland. Finland. <laughs> Finland. No, but, yeah. Um, what was coldest? Israel. Well, Israel was unfortunate because it was really rainy. Yeah. I think normally it would not be that cold. We went there really after rainy. Googling and saying like, it is in average, it's like 20, 25 degrees. And the year we were there for uh, winter. It was the coldest and the most rainiest winter they had like in 40 years yeah so we were really we had bad luck um i think otherwise we were kind of always lucky yeah totally the weather was always amazing we had snowish no not no, really we never had snow so in finland i i think the cold regions will come once we choose the north atlantic route <laughs> if we choose if the we north choose atlantic yeah route. so if we choose yeah. that, my words gets colder. I was wondering why you were rowing. <laughs> Our dinghy is the worst. Like we have a very small dinghy with uh, wood plates at the bottom. So it's not stable and it's like very uh, small. And our motor is way too big. Like we have a five horsepower, very heavy dinghy motor and it breaks the dinghy. So yeah. taking it down is like really exhausting. That's why we are working on a new um, collaboration to create the ultimate dinghy. We want to have a fully rugged dinghy with solar panels and an electrical motor. How to have a sustainable way to charge it and to not have all this weight carrying around and to, to get yeah, yeah fuel is, free. I see there are a lot of projects coming up and uh, let's see how much we are able to do and where we can take it. Sure. Ah, oh. Yes, we will do that. That would be amazing to see all the all the old friends from school. Did you sail to Sweden or Estonia? Um, no, I sailed. We took the ferry. We took the, <laughs> I, I would love to. Sailing to Sweden would be really amazing because the archipelago there and the the, the, the spots are amazing. I sailed mostly from Helsinki to Hanko and and back and in this region, but also there. For everyone that has never sailed in Finland, you have to try it. It's the most amazing thing because 
you go out onto a small uh, island, Anchorage, bay there, and there is sauna and everything on there, grilling places for the public, and you can use it freely. It's really amazing. Oh God, my French is too weak. Vous avez eu la facilité de rentrer dans les portes avec cette période de COVID. So I think he's asking us if we are allowed to go into the ports, the ports during COVID. Yes. Um, well, as long as you're in the same like, country, in the country, once you change country, you have to do a lot of uh, tests and whatever. Again, we will have to see that. I hope I got this question right. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. nice. Do we have any specific souvenir we take from the places we visit? Mostly food. <laughs> no. You're so bad. Yeah, I was saying fish we caught, but it's okay. <laughs> no, it's, it's food. We take a lot of food. We enjoy eating and cooking. And we have good food. We have still good pasta from Italy, for example. Muti sugo from Italy. We have today finished our last Italian coffee. So let's see. If we find something similar here, but yeah, but from a souvenir perspective, um, we normally uh, I love to keep tickets or stuff that we got. So if we visit, for example, the botanical um, gardens or stuff, I love to keep, keep the tickets. Um, but yeah. I think that that's mainly it. Richard, you're so right. Decisions, decisions, wine, wine fridge, fridge or, or dinghy, dinghy. Ooh. or yeah, wind yeah. generator. Or no, batteries the wishes or water would maker. Be forever, uh, so. oh, we are in a very good state with Fortuna yeah. and with with the upgrades. We did a lot of upgrades for the Atlantic crossing, and we will share also a video how we managed to put the finances together for the Atlantic crossing, which I think is, is very interesting because at the end it is also quite expensive to upgrade everything, but we found a very reasonable, nice way. Yeah. Wine fridge. Well, we, we actually crossed the one hour mark now. So, yeah, I think we'll. Um, I think it was amazing to have you all here. We don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, I hope you enjoyed some nice wine like we did. And yeah, amazing that so, so many so people much showed for up. Being here. Really we, appreciate it. We really enjoyed it. I hope you did too. If you have any other uh, questions, still throw them at us. Uh, on Instagram or YouTube. We will do the last one. What do you miss the most after choosing to spend so much time sailing? What do we miss the most? Ordering food when you're lazy to cook. I'm sorry to say that. Because the rest, you, I really don't care after the while, but when you're just sitting there, you have been working the whole day and you don't want to open the fridge and cook, we cannot order food. It's just nobody brings it here. Yeah. So that's maybe the other things. Otherwise, I don't really miss anything. What do you miss? Nice. Hello, Jan. <laughs> what has been the best country from a food perspective that you have visited? Italy. <laughs> and with that, now Turkey, like after Italy is Turkey. But yeah, uh, when is the next live session? No idea. Oh, so it was, it if, was freaking you out so it, much doing it. Let us a comment. Let yeah. us know if you liked it. And uh, if we get some good feedback, we will do more of those. It was okay. really fun for us. We liked it a lot and a lot of good questions. Thanks for that. Thanks yeah. for all the super stickers and donations. A lot of love and talk to you soon. Bye, guys. Have an amazing Sunday still and a great week. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.